a bandpass filter. So if we look at it based on the frequency response diagram, like we have been for our other filters, it would have a response that looks something like this, where that is the frequency of the horizontal scale and the amplitude or the voltage on the vertical scale. Okay, and so you see that we have a response, uh, a, a band in the middle here, okay. in the middle of the range where um, the output is a, a high response. Okay, and so that'll probably be close to whatever the input of the uh, filter is. And then the low frequencies are attenuated and also the high frequencies are attenuated. So the way that we make one of these is by cascading two filters together. So we can cascade a high pass filter, which would give us this response here from a high pass filter with its cutoff frequency. And then we put that, so we may, maybe have that as the input. So that's the first filter that we encounter. And then we connect to the output of that filter, a low pass filter, which gives us this response with its associated cutoff frequency. If you remember, the cutoff frequencies occur where the output is 0 0.707 times the input voltage. Okay? And so the if whatever the input voltage is, the output at the cutoff frequency is 0 0.707. Okay, um, so I'll just sketch a diagram how this might work. So I'm going to put in my low pass filter on the input. And then the high pass filter as a second filter. And you can see here that we've got one filter there. So this is my uh, low pass stage. So that might be giving this part of the circuit, or this part of the response. And so if you have a look at here, any of the low frequencies get passed through, but the high frequencies get effectively taken to zero volts, okay? And so the output of this, if we were to just look at it independently, would look like that, okay? So all of the low frequencies here are allowed through and the high frequencies are blocked. But then, this is the input of our second filter, which is the high pass stage, and well, this never sees the high frequencies because they're blocked by the, this stage here, so it never sees any of the high frequencies. But the low frequencies are also attenuated. So the low stage, if we were to ignore this first low pass filter, it would have that response where low frequencies are filtered out and high filter frequencies are allowed through. But the combined effect of having both of these filters cascaded together like this means that the this filter here, the high pass filter, never sees the <coughs> frequencies above the high the cutoff the high uh, the cutoff frequency of the low pass. And it attenuates the low frequencies as well. And so the output is a band pass which gives us a combined band um, a combined response of something like that. Okay, so two filters in series effectively um, can provide a high pass filter. There's a couple of things you need to be a bit careful about here. If I made this cutoff frequency, I'll just I'll put some numbers in actually just for um, for to make it sort of practical for us. So let's say I have the cutoff frequency for the low pass here as let's say it's one kilohertz and I had the for the high pass here I made it 100 hertz then that would give me a 100 to 1k band like that okay so that would work 
Okay, that would be our desired response. And but what if I had it the other way around? So what if I decide to design this to be 100 hertz instead, and this to be one kilohertz? Then my response, I would have 100 hertz on the low pass side, so this would be 100, but the 1 kilohertz is actually up here somewhere, and so um, frequencies above 100 hertz are filtered out, and frequencies, um, so any frequencies above 100 hertz are never really seen by the high pass filter, but 100 hertz is lower than the current frequency for this one, and so there aren't actually no high um, frequencies to be seen, and so what we end up getting is a no response at all, okay? So, or well, very low response. So if you make the cutoff frequency for the low pass below that of the high pass, you end up with blocking all of the frequencies that would go enter in the filter, and so you're effectively just stopping everything, okay? So it's bit, you've got to be a bit careful about that. Um, if they are close together, keeping in mind that this isn't just like a step, it's not just if it's up to 100, it's through, and if it's after 100, it's completely stopped. It does drop off gradually. Um, if they were close together, you might end up with a very low response like that, which is nowhere near what your output should be. If they were significantly far apart, then you would probably find that you get completely stopped altogether. So you must be careful about when you're doing your filter design, if you're designing a bandpass filter, that the, um, the low pass filter is actually higher than the high pass filter, otherwise you're not going to be allowing anything through. And the other consideration that you need to make for these filters is um, I'm going to redraw this diagram just slightly differently and it might make it more uh, easy to understand what it is I'm talking about. And there's my VR. Okay, now I haven't really changed the circuit at all. I've just shown that the out uh, this high pass filter here is a is just straight up and down. Okay, and it's in parallel with the capacitor for this low pass. So um, if I were to think about what this resistor and capacitor here are going to be uh, behave like, I can say that that's going to be equivalent to a bit like that. Actually, I'm going to redraw that capacitor instead as a as its reactant. Okay. So we've got a resistor on the input here, which you might call it R1, R2. C2, C1. Okay. So I've got R1. This is the input resistor for this um, low pass. And the capacitor for that low pass is actually in parallel with the high pass filter here, which at a certain whatever frequency just behaves like a resistor with a combined uh, resistance and reactance, which we call impedance. And that's in parallel with the reactance of this, this capacitor here on the high pass. Uh, low pass, sorry. And so that's going to behave as a filter with a different characteristic than the filter that we're after. So having two filters cascaded together, what it really means is that if I designed, so this is the low pass. Um, filter here, 
and let's say I design it to have a one kilohertz cutoff. So I chose R1 and C1 to give me that, cut, that uh, value. Then just it on its own, it would give me pretty good representation of it. So it'd be within the, the era of these uh, capacitors and resistors. Okay? But when I have these two added into the mix, those are going to affect the reactance of this, the effective reactance of this, and change that cutoff frequency. So if I designed R, the, this to have a cutoff of 1 kilohertz by choosing R1 and C1, and then I wanted to have a cutoff of 100 hertz by choosing R2 and C2, what I would find is that R2 and C2 are really in parallel with C1, and so they affect the cutoff frequency. So I'd find that the cutoff frequency here, if I measured it, it would be significantly different than the one kilohertz that I calculated for R1 and C1. Likewise, for probably a bit more obscure reason, but it's a similar pr pr principle, the, um, the reactance of uh, C2 is going to be affected, well, sorry, the, the cutoff frequency of this high pass filter here is going to be affected by uh, C1 to a degree because it's in parallel with that filter there and so it gets, it's going to not be the calculated value for R2 and C2 there. So if I chose R2 and C2 to give me a cutoff frequency of say 100 hertz what I would find is that when I built this circuit, this bandpass filter, that the actual band, so this is what the design was, so put it Okay, so this, if this was the design, what we might find for the measure is that it is something like that. So, the design. <laughs> okay, and it may not be shifted by that amount, it might be narrowed, or it might be spread out, um, depending on what the cutoff frequencies are um, and what we chose for C1 and R1. So if we chose a different pair of resistors, we would get a different response, a measured response as well. So um, when you have a passive filter, bandpass filter like this, it is actually very, very difficult to be able to um, predict what the output response is going to really be because the two filters affect each other in their cutoff frequency.